Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We have a few stories we're going to go over today because Microsoft is firing back at Sony and some of the uh, government boards out there that are dismissing Nintendo as a family-friendly only system, making a very strong argument for why actually Switch just appeals to everyone and this just is false information coming from governing boards. Beyond all that, we also have some news on Fire Emblem Engage that we need to get to and one other story you can check the timestamps down below if you're interested. If you're enjoying the show, if you're enjoying our uh, video here, I would appreciate if you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, all that. Uh, also, hey, our channel is brought to you by eWin Racing. They're an official partner of the channel. They make some of the best chairs. That's why you see my chairs in almost every single video I make because I really enjoy them a lot. They have saved my back and allowed me to actually do this full time because if my back was in too much pain, I wouldn't be able to handle it. So. Big thank you to Ewin Racing. You can get 20% off your order using our code Nintendo Prime. Uh, just go check out the link down in the description. All right, let's get into our first story here. And this deals with Microsoft, who is arguing that Nintendo offers a broader range of mature content than Xbox. We're reading this off of NintendoEverything.com. It says, according to Microsoft, Nintendo offers a broader range of mature content than Xbox. Xbox. Microsoft statements came about as part of a response to the UK CMA about wanting to buy Activision. Despite some claiming that Nintendo is more family friendly, Switch in particular has proved otherwise. Microsoft highlighted the Nintendo published Bayonetta 3, the console exclusive Shin Megami Tensei 5, and other third party titles such as The Witcher 3 near Automata. Ultimately, Microsoft is looking to prove that Nintendo is as much of a competitor as Sony is with PlayStation and was looking to provide evidence that Nintendo Switch is not just a console aimed at family-friendly customer segment, but more broadly is a diverse group of gamers across all demographics. Here's that full statement. Issues statement suggests that Sony is Microsoft's closest competitor in gaming consoles. By contrast, the issues statement contends that Nintendo offers differentiated hardware and content aimed primarily at a different, example, more family-friendly customer segment. The suggestion that Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo are not close competitors is incorrect. Nintendo offers a broader range of mature content than Xbox. The CMA has mischaracterized the Nintendo Switch as being predominantly for families. Such a characterization neglects the fact that more mature slash adult games are available on Switch and are actively marketed, including on Switch's YouTube channel. These games include Apex Legends, The Witcher 3, Doom Eternal, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, Cult of the Lamb, Near Automata, The End of Yora Edition, Alan Wake Remastered, Crisis Remastered, Outlast, Little Nightmares, Five Nights at Freddy's, and Life is Strange. Recent Switch exclusives have received mature ratings. Several of Nintendo Switch's latest exclusives have been distinctly non-family friendly games. Bayonetta 3, a third party action game by Platinum Games, was rated as mature by the Entertainment Software Ratings Board for violence, blood, and gore, partial nudity, and strong language. Likewise, third party exclusive Shin Megami Tensei 5, released in November last year, was rated mature by the ESRB for blood, partial nudity, sexual themes, and violence, noting that the game depicts several female monsters with partially exposed breasts and buttocks. One creature appears with a phallic shaped head and torso, a hand full of demons such as a succubus and an incubus are described with sexual characteristics the words f and s appear in the game despite this content clearly not being family friendly both games have been actively marketed by nintendo including at nintendo direct presentations where the company markets and presents its latest content this is evidence that nintendo switch is not just a console aimed at family friendly customer segment but more broadly at a diverse group of gamers across all demographics. Notably, Nintendo also released an age uh, comparison showing that, yeah, most people that play on Switch happen to be adults. It's just the way that it is. You can still try to infer family friendliness out of that chart if you want. It's all about interpretation. But what's not up for interpretation is the fact that Nintendo obviously does this. Microsoft did not go into detail, of course, about how there are actually games that are banned on PlayStation and Xbox that also appear on Switch from certain Japanese publishers. But Maybe they didn't want to go so far to point out the AO content that also exists on Switch. The point obviously is being made that Nintendo is not just a family-friendly system. It does a wide demographic just like Xbox and PlayStation. Obviously, you can't argue the hardware is similar, but you can argue that the demographic going after is similar. And that demographic is just people who play games, right? Like 
All three of these consoles are fighting for your time. I think this is a very fair argument for Microsoft to make. But hey, what do I know? These are legal proceedings and it's billion dollar companies going at each other right now. One trying to block the Activision Blizzard deal. The other trying to make the Activision Blizzard deal. It is what it is. Both are operating from likely positions of greed and wanting to do what's best for their companies. So, hey, I guess we'll just find out soon. I think we'll know soon if that Activision Blizzard deal actually gets blocked. Next up, Sakurai actually... Talked about Kid Icarus Uprising. He released a new video on YouTube where he said the following. Now, obviously, he's either hinting that the game has been ported or will be ported, or he's just putting some pressure on Nintendo to port the game. I don't know that Sakurai needs to publicly pressure Nintendo to do something like that, especially since he has his own development studio. He could obviously offer to port the game himself. I think this is more of a hint, hint, Kid Icarus Uprising is coming to Switch at some point. Hint, hint, I can't announce it, but hint, hint, I could talk about it because I made the game. I don't know. That's kind of the vibes I'm getting here. You guys let me know the vibes you're getting from Masahiro Sakurai down in the comments below. Now, a new Fire Emblem Engage trailer dropped, and I guess it's all about the Emblem Rings. So we have an official description uh, released with it, so enjoy the trailer while we read that description. In a war against the Fell Dragon, four kingdoms work together with heroes from other worlds to seal away this great evil. 1,000 years later, this seal was weakened, and the Fell Dragon is about to reawaken. As a divine dragon, use rich strategies and robust customization to meet your destiny, to collect emblem rings and bring peace back to the content of Elios. Summon valiant heroes like Marth and Cilicia with the power of emblem rings and add their power to yours in this brand new Fire Emblem story. Aside from merging appearances, engaging lets you inherit weapons, skills, and more from these battle-tested legends. The turn-based tactical battle system returns with a fresh cast of characters you can customize and engage to carefully craft your strategy. Fire Emblem Engage does release on January 20th. We do have a link to pre-order the game down in the description below that does support the channel, so I would appreciate it if you guys would use that. I think it's a for uh, Best Buy if you're comfortable buying there. Anyways, guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. This has obviously been really cool. I like when we can get multiple stories jammed in here. Uh, that Microsoft thing is really interesting. Obviously, Fire Emblem Engage is the next big Nintendo Switch title, next big exclusive. Really looking forward to that. Uh, and yeah, I didn't mention this, but I guess I'll just say it now. Digital Foundry did their tech analysis of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And, uh, if you're someone that, that, that likes laughing at, uh, how bad a game is from a technical standpoint, you might want to go check out that video. It's, uh, <laughs> let's just say this game needed a lot more time in the oven. All right, guys, I'm Nathaniel Robojazz from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.